Is there an area of law in family law more controversial than child support? I would be hard pressed to find it. Welcome to Gavels Down, Voices Up with me, Rachel King. This is where we leave convention at the courtroom door and dive into your real stories, bold and unpopular opinions, and change-making ideas that really shake the legal world up and change where change is desperately needed. I'm here to shake it up, talk about unfiltered insights, and amplify voices that need to be heard. So are you ready? Let's get it. Put the gavels down and the voices up. My name is Rachel King. This is Gavels Down, Voices Up, and today we're going to talk all about child support. Now, the most controversial issue in child support is that even when there's an equal timeshare, higher wage earner could be paying lower wage earner child support, and many people don't like it. Why is that? Well, let's talk about it. So child support, the idea, the policy behind child support is that the child should have the same quality or standard of life in both parents' households. Maybe this is to do away with the Disneyland dad concepts or something like that, or just to make the kids more comfortable, make them want to go to the other parent's house and feel welcomed in each parent's house as though it is their house. That could be the goal. It is the goal. Again, it is the policy to keep the child's standard of living as equal as possible in both parents' houses. So that means that even when you have the most common equal timeshare, which is a week on week off schedule, you're still going to have to pay child support to the other parent when you are the higher wage earner. And man, do people hate that. You know what else people hate? The payor of child support never thinks that it's low enough, right? They always think they're paying for more. And the payee, the person receiving child support, they never think it's enough. They always say, oh my gosh, it's so expensive to raise children. So what do we do and how is child support handled? Well, child support is typically ordered based on the amount of time that your child spends with both parents, right? Your timeshare. That could be an equal timeshare, like a week on, week off, or a two, two, three. There's lots of different ways that people have decided to share their time. It could also be based on another timeshare. I have families where mom lives across the country, child goes to see mom on summers and school breaks. I have other families where the children go to dad every other weekend. In any event, no matter what your visitation schedule looks like, Remember, both parents have a visitation schedule. We calculate the amount of time down to the hour. I calculate time down to the hour. So if you have time, you have your kids Sunday night at 8 p.m. until Monday night at 8 p.m., 52 weeks a year, I would do 24 hours times 52, right? So I literally take a calendar and I figure out how much time each parent has over the year. And then I know I'm a lawyer, so I don't do math as well as some of the mathematicians, but I do the math problem. And I take the amount of time, the amount of hours that parent A has with the kids, and I divide it by 8,760. Why? Because that's how many hours are in a year. I get a decimal and then I turn it to a percentage. I can do math, guys. And then that timeshare, that is what I use to base or to help calculate child support. Other things that I use are income. I mean, that goes without saying, right? So how much does mom make? How much does dad make? How much time does mom have? How much time does dad have? And then I also look at things like tax filings. Are you claiming head of household with 20 dependents or are you single, just you? How you claim taxes matters. Why does how you claim taxes matter? This is so counterintuitive. And when I figured this out and I learned it as an attorney, I was like mind blown. Again, maybe because I'm not a a mathematician. So the more dependents you have, the more tax write-offs you have, the less taxes you pay, the more availability of income you have. That means the more child support you can pay. 
The less tax write-offs you have, the higher your taxes will be, the less disposable income you have, the less child support you pay. So if you are head of household with four dependents, your available income for child support or to pay to support your children is higher than the other parent who is single claiming one dependent, right? Because they pay more taxes. And this matters. It matters because when we're trying to create child support, again, we're trying to figure out a number that can be affordable, not affordable to you, but affordable under the law and keep the same standard of living. So if dad is paying more taxes and you mom has more available availability of income, we're just trying to get them sort of to the same level so that the kids both have ho- uh, rooms and beds and food at each of the houses. Now, Some of the other things that we count are if you have health insurance premiums or you have childcare expenses that are necessary for work, mandatory union dues, mandatory retirement. Here's the kicker. It is good to save for retirement. We all have to save for retirement because who wants to be working until they're 75 or 80? Nobody I know. So saving for retirement is great. Saving for retirement and your IRA or your voluntary 401k is not mandatory retirement for the purposes of child support. What is? Well, if you're a teacher in California, you have to pay into CalPERS. If you are a firefighter, right? If you're a public employee in California, you have to pay into it. If you're part of a union and you have mandatory union dues, you have no choice but to pay those. And those will be counted when it comes to your availability of income for child support. We also look at self-employment income. We look at all of the incomes. And then we look at how many people are in your household. A question I get asked a lot is, well, if I get married, is my new spouse's income going to be used to calculate child support? Like, basically, am I going to get an increase in child support because I marry rich? The court, what I've heard judges say, we have a formula, right? So I'm trying to explain how the formula works, but also I'm not a computer, so I don't really know how the formula works. I go in and enter in all of the numbers and then out comes a sheet of paper. But what I've heard judges explain is your spouse's income cannot be used to support your children from another relationship because they're not their financial responsibility. However, your spouse's income can be used to determine how much of your income is being used for your household expenses, again, freeing up the availability of income. So if your new spouse, for example, contributes so much to the household that basically it is their income that's providing for the household, that might free up a lot of your income or more of your income for the purposes of child support. Make sense? Maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. That's how the courts are justifying it, or that's how the legislators have justified it. And I've heard from other states that this is totally wrong, but I'm speaking California because, like, I practice in California. And now for a quick break. This episode of Gavels Down Voices Up is proudly brought to you by King Law Firm Attorneys at Law Incorporated. We're not just about winning cases, we're about making a difference. Whether it's family law, probate litigation, or standing up against elder abuse. We bring experience, empathy, and excellence to the courtroom. At King Law Firm, we're more than lawyers. We're your team in your corner, advocating for your rights and making your voice heard. Visit us at thelawyerking.com and on the socials at The Lawyer King to see how we fight with you and for you. King Law Firm Attorneys at Law Incorporated, where your fight becomes our fight. Now, let's get back to today's episode. Hardships. Hardships. How many people do you have to take care of? Do you have dependent adults? Are you low income? You can claim those as well. You can plead to the court that you need a reduction in child support. You can also plead to the court that you should get more child support. And I have this happen a lot where people want to diverge from the guideline child support, which is the basis of child support in California. But And there's a law that says you can do that. But in that case, I think, and what I've heard judges say, is that that deviation is really for a situation where like Warren Buffett is your dad and he has so much income that if we were to go with guideline support, you would never have an equal household. So maybe we give more so that the kids are living a life of luxury at both houses. 
But it's very hard in my entire time practicing. I've never seen a court deviate from guideline outside of the standard deductions or a hardship. The big controversy, well, I shouldn't say the big controversy, like all of child support is controversial, right? But the big controversy is that your debts don't count to reduce or increase your child support. What does this mean? So like the court isn't going to say because you have a whole lot of credit card debt or you decided to go buy a G-Wagon or a Bugatti, I think is how you say it, that my son is always talking about, because you decided to make that decision or live in a mansion house or eat only organic from, I don't know, I can't even think of Bristol Farms or something. You made those choices because your expenses are higher doesn't necessarily mean your need is justified for increased child support. You just need to learn how to live within your own means. And not wanting to work or not working absent some real reason, like not your reason, but like a legally valid reason isn't going to be enough to, again, have child support be offset. Many courts will come and impute at at least full-time minimum wage. But I've also seen courts impute way higher than full-time minimum wage. In fact, I had a court one time come in and say, look, mom, you have three doctoral degrees, and I get it that you don't think you can find a job, but we're not just going to impute you at full-time minimum wage. We're going to impute you at like $150,000 a year, which was like the low end, I think, of a teaching job that they could get based on all of their education. The court can't go in and make mom or dad work, but the court can say, but we're going to adjust your ability to receive support or even make you obligated to pay support based on what you should or could be earning. Does that make sense? It is a complicated process. And again, this is why nobody likes child support. Gosh, can you wait till your kids are 18 and graduate high school or full-time high school students, but not past 19 years old? That's like the, the typical time that child support ends. No, everybody wants that until your kid becomes 19 and moves out. And then you can't claim them as a dependent anymore, which recently happened to me. I was kind of bummed, but that's okay. Cause I still don't have to pay for her. And you are not on the hook to pay for your kid when they are an adult. There's some small little nuances to that. But even if other parent says you should, you don't have to. You don't have to pay for college for your adult child. You don't have to pay for your car or their car. I'm sorry. You don't have to pay for their cell phone. You don't have to give them a place to live. You don't have to do any of it. And just because society is coming in and putting all of this pressure on parents saying how expensive it is for kids to live on their own these days, it's not your responsibility. 18 years old, graduated high school if they're still in high school, and you are done absent some of the exceptions. So keep that in mind and don't feel guilty if you can't afford it or if you've been like, oh God, I've been waiting 18 years for this day to end or to come. I don't want to pay child support. Write your last child support check. And with that, you don't get an accounting for child support. <laughs> This always makes me laugh because I understand the concept and why people want it so much. But practically speaking, every single person that has said I should be entitled to an accounting for the child support that I pay, I go back to and I say, like, how does that work? And I've never gotten a response. So you're paying child support or you're receiving child support. But let's go with the pay your side. You're paying child support, you pay $1,000 per month, and all you see, we're gonna go with the, the stereotypical one because I'm a woman, so it's easier for me to always talk from the woman's point of view, and in this case, the woman's point of view is the stereotype. So dad is paying $1,000 per month in child support to mom. The payment goes to mom. Mom is getting her nails done every week and her hair is always on point and she's always wearing the nice clothes and the Gucci purses and the Prada backpacks, going out for wine parties, lunches, brunches, the whole nine. And dad's over here saying, you know, I pay for that. You get to do all of that because you use my child support. I want an accounting. I want to know that the thousand dollars that I pay is going to our children and not to your nails, your hair, your brunches with girlfriends. And you can't get it. 
Why? Because there is no practical way for doing it. Child support is to be is based on making sure that a child has a roof over their head, making sure that the child has food, making sure that the child has clothing, making sure that the child has electricity, maybe internet at this point in our technology phase, right? All of these things. How do you then say, the internet bill is $100 per month. The two-year-old only uses it to watch Netflix. The 15-year-old uses it 24 hours a day. Mom uses it 50%. Like, how do you allocate that bill out to the child? How do you allocate the rental value? How do you allocate water? How do you allocate food? Maybe food and clothing you could do, but you see, it really isn't practical to say, this is how much of this money is going. The money goes in, the, the party that's receiving it is expected to maintain a lifestyle for the children and whether the money comes in from child support and immediately goes out to the nail salon doesn't really matter as long as all of it's being provided for. If you think that the supported party has more access to money, maybe they have somebody new that's come in to pay bills, maybe they've received more income, maybe they're seeing the children less, who knows the dynamic, but you can go in and get a modification. Same would be true of the other side, right? If the supported party is like, hey, other parent just got a killer bonus, an amazing raise and never sees the kids anymore, maybe you go in and get an increase in child support. If you're concerned that the fridge is empty, the kids don't have electricity and they're living in a uh, non-inhabitable place, that's a separate issue than child support and asking if you are entitled to an accounting. I just don't see how an accounting is practical. And this is after seeing a lot of child support. Let's talk about the last thing of the day that I think is really controversial. And that is that even on your time, you continue to pay child support. This typically comes up when you have a timeshare, like uh, one parent gets a majority of the summer or breaks or something like that. You have long periods of time where the child is with one parent and that parent, maybe the kid is with that parent for nine weeks of the summer. That parent's still writing a check for child support for all of those nine weeks. And that can be a bummer. In fact, when I was a kid, I got put in the middle of that exact situation. I would go to my dad's house and I actually think it was very cool that my stepmom would teach me how to pay bills and stuff. But during that time, I would also get talked to about how they didn't think it was fair that they had to pay child support during the time that I was at uh, their house. Now, as a kid, it didn't really, you know, it kind of went over my head. I didn't like it for the kid reasons. But now as an attorney, I can explain and understand why you had to pay child support during the time. And here it is, because child support is based on your hours of time for the entire year. So when the calculation was made, it was already considering that you were going to have those nine weeks, and then they prorate it over the 12 months. If you didn't have those nine weeks, your time would be way higher. Get it? Child support can, can always be modified. In many states now, there are limitations on how far you can go back. But I will say, being on public aid or public assistance, you can, for the most part, make an agreement as to what you want child support to be. There is very limited circumstances in the law, especially family law, where you can't reach an agreement that works for you. So if you are in an equal timeshare situation, it's okay to say, hey, we're going to set child support at zero. If you are in a situation where both parents are comfortable and confident and can equally provide and do equally provide for their kids, you can set child support. You can come up with a dollar amount and you can modify it later. But here's two things that you should never do in child support. The biggest errors, you should never pay child support in cash and you should never agree to a modification or a change verbally. Why? Because when somebody gets upset down the road or is hard up for cash, they're going to go back and say, I didn't receive child support and we didn't modify. And then you are screwed. So does child support need to be revamped? Are there issues with it? Certainly. Can you come up with your own agreement? Absolutely. And if you have questions about child support, you should go talk to an attorney in your area or many states, California specifically, but I'm pretty sure the other states too, have a child support enforcement agency that will help you look into it for free. I also do hear that they charge in some states, so I don't really know, but there's an agency out there that can help you figure out child support. I get it. 
paying sucks. Raising kids are expensive, but they're yours and you got to do it for a certain amount of time. My name is Rachel King. This is Gavels Down, Voices Up. Thanks for tuning in to Gavels Down, Voices Up. Like what you heard? Then don't just sit there. Subscribe, share, and tell me your thoughts. I'm Rachel King, bringing not just my opinions to the mic, but about the courtroom too. Your part, keep listening, keep engaging. And until next time, let's keep those gavels down and our voices up, unmistakably up.